had a bit of a surprise when you saw the HP logo on the conference. Uh. Hi, Dean. <laughs> okay, good to see you again. So, again, coming back, there's a few that were surprised. How many of you knew that HP has software products? Can I have a show of hands? Wow, we have quite a good representation. So, I was thinking that probably you'd be surprised that we're here. Usually when you talk to people and you say, well, I'm with HP software, they're going to say, really, HP does software? Since when? <laughs> so in my case, for 10 years, I've been with HP for 10 years. And um, to start from scratch, my name is Victoria Voynichescu. I'm a product manager in HP software. Uh, I'm here with uh, Roy Muriel, who is the chief functional architect for my product. And we have two goals that we want to accomplish today, hopefully very quickly. One is to make you aware that we have been doing Agile for a long time in HP software. And it was an unbelievable story and we have many things to that we've learned from that and we want to share. Roy has another presentation on Saturday about that. And the second one is that we have a pretty cool new product called HP Agile Manager, an Agile project management tool. Uh, it's been out for 15 months now and uh, not only is it new and modern, but it has great integrations with QC, the best in the industry, with HP PPM, and also with a whole bunch of development tools, IDEs, source control management, and build tools. So uh, those, yes, sir. Oh my God. Oh, that's, that's amazing. We have three people. <laughs> Because right. this is the new kid on the block, we just want you to take a look at it, be aware it exists. We have a demo booth downstairs, and hopefully it will be appealing enough uh, for you. So what we have in mind to do today is a live demo, which is a challenge usually, but I think it's the best way to introduce a new product. Um, by the way, in, in my role, this is a role that I've been in for the last five, uh, four years. But prior to that, I have been a developer like many of you, I guess. You know, the telecom industry, real-time operating system, databases, etc. I've been a manager in R&D. I've been a QA manager. I've been doing Agile for seven years. Started off in small teams. Everybody collocated sticky notes. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. And then we realized that that doesn't work and we have to scale it to large teams. And now in HP software, you know, thousands of developers. So. I think we learned our lessons, and this product is a product that came from our experience and is also a product that we've been using to build it, right? So we use the product to plan and track our work as we are building the product. So a lot of experience went into this. The way we plan to do it, mm, I don't know how good the resolution is, so and so. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the <coughs> regular agile capabilities and the cool stuff there. And Roy is gonna talk about the integration with the dev environments and what you get from that because it's a, it's a new, fresh perspective um, to add the agile project management tools. So maybe, maybe before we start, a short question. How many people over here are, I don't know, a program manager or project managers, if you can raise your hands? Okay. Mm -hmm. How many people are from the development side, are developers, developer managers? Excellent. Okay, good. Cool stuff. The others are, I guess, something in between, right? So <laughs> QA guys or, or, or other managers that, okay, right. good. So, so uh, the, the main capabilities of the tools are obviously triggered at these personas that Ro Roy just mentioned. So in, in the product backlog, which is where we start our journey, we have a, a hierarchical view of the work on themes, features, and then user stories or defects. So you can see here in my backlog that I have a list of themes. For each of the themes, I have the level of completion in the backlog. And as you uh, mouse over all this stuff, you're gonna get a lot of summary information. In this case, you see the number of user stories in that particular theme, what is the total uh, defect, the total story points, how much is done. And here, just by clicking on the themes, you're gonna get to the actual features that are part of that theme, these epics. And for the features, you're going to see pretty much the same level of information. So as a, as a product manager, for instance, as a CMO, you can come here. How done 
am I with these particular items? Just, Victoria, I want to share one, one more thing with the audience. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the HP software products, but um, we, we used to have our products that were not that appealing from a UX perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I can share with you that for that product, we have a dedicated uh, UX team that is working with us and making sure that our product is much more intuitive for customers and it's much, uh, it's really easy to start and to um, uh, enjoy and, and benefit and find the functionality in the product and, and again, we'll be, be, we will be more than happy to get your feedback if something is missing or if you see that, uh, I don't know, the functionality is not intuitive. Overall, uh, the feedback is very positive from what we're getting from our customers. You know, if we get to the backlog items, the user stories or defects that are part of the backlog item for, for, for this product, I can see that I have a lot of information for them, but my main purpose in this view is to look at my new items and start assigning them to a new release. On the run hand side here, you have your releases. And the cool thing about these releases is that you have not only the start and date, but you have your estimated capacity. If you're going to use the same teams that you used in previous releases, it's pretty much the same number of sprints, etc. You know how much stuff you can pull into this release. And pulling is what you do. You'll just click on an item and just move them to a release. This is how easy you do and obviously you can do bulk assignments, etc., etc. And as you do that, you're going to see where you are. Like in this instance, for instance, I see that I'm over. I've over planned this release. I put too much items in it. But this is how much of my release it's already done at this point in time. So if I go to the release itself, I'm going to move into a, a different tab, which is this time the release management tab. And what do I have here? I have my release backlog. Again, for each of the items in the release, a lot of information, who's working on them. For instance, in this case, I have all my new items because what I'm trying to do here is to plan the release by pulling items into different sprints, different teams. And again, the interface is very um, flexible. You can uh, move from sprints, teams. Notice very importantly, I have a bunch of applications that I'm working on, and I see them all because I'm in a management position. But otherwise, my team members would only see the application that they're interested in, data segregation for multiple applications within the same database schema. What is the purpose for that? To show the dependencies across all of these user stories. Many of you are working with dependencies. And number two, to be able to show in the dashboard releases that are composed of items from various applications. Our own product is made out of three applications. We show the release as items come into the release from various applications. So again, here we have these items. I'm going to look at the ones in new state. Obviously, I can rank them according to priority. And uh, on the right-hand side, I have my teams. For each of the teams, I have obviously the projected velocity. I know how much work the team can do, and I'm just going to click and drag an item and assign it to a particular team. And you can see already I have some items assigned to this team, and I'm just going to go, obviously, in the, in, in the real world, you're going to see that teams are usually a little bit over allocated. You're going to get warnings and exceptions when that happens. But this would be what you do to plan items from your release into your sprints and teams. And with that, you know, you, we can move to a particular sprint and team. In this case, let's say that we are in sprint seven for team blue. And we already see the backlog for this particular sprint for my team. And for on the right hand side, pretty consistent in terms, uh, types of uh, view. Now you see the team members and their capacity and how much of their capacity, like for instance, this team member is definitely over allocated. I put too much stuff on him. But the other ones have capacity. So if I have an item that I want to assign to somebody, I click and drag that item uh, just like I did before. I see how much of their work is already finished here. And for each of these individual user stories or defect on the bottom of the screen, I'm going to see the tasks associated with them and the level of completion and how much time has been sent on, spent on the task, but also the acceptance tests that have been created for each of these user stories. So very easy from product backlog to release backlog to sprint backlog, really easy uh, flow. And when I actually work in that sprint, I can have a different view of that sprint, which is definitely the task board. Everybody works with task boards. You know how to do 
task board. You know, for instance, here I have all my user stories, the level of completion for each one of them, and on the lane I have all the tasks associated with the user story. It's very easy to create new tasks. It's very easy to do a lot of actions for that particular user story. So let me show you how, for instance, I'm creating a new task, or maybe two. Let's say that I'm creating a new coding task, and then I create a new validation task. I'm going to try to be very, very fast here. And as I create these two new tasks, they're going to show here uh, when I, I can go in and assign easily this task to a particular member of my team. Let's say that I want to assign this task to one of my developers. I can color code this task to show that it's a development task. Uh, I'm going to say that this is the you know, number of hours that I want to work on this task. So as I do that, then as I move the task into, let's say, in progress and start working on it, I'm going to come here on a daily basis and say, well, today I spent maybe three hours, four hours on this task. This is how much is remaining. And the level of completion of the user story is updated with all the time uh, updates. So when all my tasks, for instance, are completed, I move them into the completed state as each of the developers and testers are, sorry, doing their work. I'm just trying to move very, very fast on this. Oh, let me just assign this to somebody because it's an orphan task. So how do you count the hours? How do I, I'm sorry? The time you allocate that person to that task, who decides that? That's how do I do what? I'm sorry. The time, uh, the hours needed for that particular task to be completed? Yes. yes. Yes, so, it's, so it's the members doing that. But what I wanted to show you here, as I move all my tasks into completed, there's a built-in definition of done, and it's a very cool one, because it says, you know, your task is completed. Is this user story done? And I'm going to say, sure, my user story is done. But there's stuff in the back end that says, hey, you have user acceptance tests that have not been run or have failed. You have open defects. You cannot mark this task as done unless you overwrite your definition of done. And soon enough, you'll see that uh, we have also stuff coming from development, which is unit test coverage, pass rate, that is built into the definition of done as well. But what, one more comment. I can tell you that at least uh, in our R&D, we're using that view when we're doing our stand-up meetings. And basically, we are playing with those uh, tasks uh, around. And, and as a developer, I can come and say, I, I need more time for that, exactly, to yeah, do what you, you mentioned. Yeah, you are fine if you discover more work, absolutely. At, at the epic level, let me show you how I, I'm getting there. Yeah. So we're just trying to make this as short as possible because we only have 15 minutes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Through the states, yes. When you move it to completed state, it's going to put the remaining hours to zero. It assumes that you just don't want to go through. Okay, so I, I completed all the remaining hours, and now I'm moving to completed state. Right, my question is other way. My question is vice versa. If I enter zero in remaining hours, oh, is it going to be moved to remain yeah, to the completed state? Yes, there are teams yeah. that are not using this. Um, I mean, the time. <laughs> Uh, estimations or the time work. So, so you can put it at zero and then you can actually run it through moves the, to the completed state. Yeah. The, there are teams that are not using those estimations in order to, um, uh, I mean, it really depends how the team is working and we wanted yeah. to give the flexibility for the team. So I hope, I hope it answers your question. If not, come later on and, and I will yeah, answer we'll, that. We'll be happy to answer that. Because what, what I wanted to show you now, and, and this is happening in a scrum of scrum type of environment, which is what we work like. Uh, so as the teams do their own, you know, sprint planning and pull stuff into their sprints, etc., at the end of the planning session, you have a PMO who's looking around and saying, what have we done now? Like, do I know? And like, each of the scrum masters know what's going on, but do you know the big pictures? And that's why we introduced what we call a planning board. And let me just move the resolution here so you can see more. So in the planning board, we basically have uh, lanes and columns and colors as a third dimension and you can show whatever it is that you want to show in the planning board you customize it you save it as a favorite but what an example of what you'd see you know for each team you'd see the work that's allocated sprint after sprint after sprint and you can see here defects as well as user stories represented in different, different icons 
But here, for instance, on the third dimension, on the color dimension, I chose to represent my themes. Let's say I, I can represent priorities, I can represent features, I can represent whatever I want there. But it will give me an idea of how good my planning is when it executed uh, sort of uh, siloed in different themes versus what I want as a PMO of the Scrum of Scrum. Right now, if I look at it and say, hmm, look, I'm stretching this feature over so many sprints, why do I do that? Why don't I want to finish this feature sooner? So maybe I can pick a piece of work and move it to an earlier sprint or move it to a different team just so I make sure that I'm completed whenever I want to get this completion. This is one of the features the most used by our teams just because it gives them the ability to do the tune up at the end of the planning session in the sprint. Uh, another cool thing that we do uh, and it's related to the, the same planning and execution and tracking, is the storyboard. This is basically Kanban. What we do here, we give you the opportunity to customize your lanes and your board. For instance, here you see that while we have, we added two new lanes, and in the planning session we have, you know, defining the specs, reviewing, doing the usability review, etc. And this you can customize, you can define the work in progress limits, just like you saw in the previous session. And this board is customizable at the team level. Each team can pick whatever it is that they want to see in the states in the board. But the idea is that ultimately they're all aligned across the same metrics. So somebody, a PMO for instance, can report on the teams consistently because they're all aligned on the same metrics. And the beauty of it is that we can execute both in pure Kanban, where you don't have sprints anymore, just one release with flow of data, but we also execute in Scrumban. So each sprint you can still execute in your planning board, and for each of these user stories, if you open the user story, you can still break it down into tasks, and you do the things as you always have done them. So this is a thing that will, will you know, help you with your customizations. Everybody wants something customizable. Another very cool feature that is related to agile execution is the sprint closure. You get to the end of your sprint, it's the last day, you run your retrospective. What you want to do as a scrum master, for instance, is to see, okay, what have I done this sprint? And you can use it throughout the sprint, not just at the end. This is my planned work, right? This is what I took on at the beginning of the sprint. How much of it is done? How much of it is still to be completed? And this is what I've added throughout the sprint as I discovered more work that needs to be done. And this, I'm looking at the status of my defects, I'm looking at the status of my user acceptance tests, how many have passed, failed, or I haven't even done them. I'm looking at the completion of my user story, so I have a big picture of everything that happened in my sprint. And as I close my sprint, I list in the retrospective the things that went all well, and I can list here a multitude of things the things to improve, but more so, I can create action items directly into my retrospective, a list of action items, like you see here on the right, some are done, some will carry with you sprint after sprint, and also very interesting, if these action items in, you know, mean that I need to write some software, for instance, for my continuous integration, I can turn them into backlog items and they will be allocated to the sprint, next sprint automatically. So, more so, let's say that I'm here at the end of my sprint and this is show me the work that is not completed. What do I do with this work? Right here in the sprint closure, I have the opportunity to pick each of these user stories and as I pick them, I can roll them to the next sprint. I can unplan them all together from my release or sprint. I can split the user story and keep whatever's done here and move the unfinished task to the next sprint and I'll finish them in the next sprint. So I have a lot of opportunities to clean up my plate. And as I said, you don't have to do it only on the last day of the sprint. You can look at this throughout the sprint and see what you need to do. It's, it's just a, a very good uh, way of viewing your work during the sprint. So I'm already late. Very, very quickly, I'm gonna pass uh, this to Roy to show you more on the integration with the development uh, tools. But just so you are aware, we have a customizable dashboard and a whole bunch of widgets out of the box that you can add to your dashboard, you know, broken into applications, into widgets for the defects, for Kanban, for Sprint, for whatever it is. As you can see, this is pre-existing 
reports that you can add to your dashboard, and more so, you can create your custom graphs and add them to the dashboards. And with this, let me pass it on to Roy to talk to you about okay, so it's, the development stuff. Yeah. So it's going to be really quick because we really don't have a lot of time. So and, and, and you must be hungry. And you probably, so I'm the only one who is holding you to eat your lunch. Uh, just two things that was important for me to mention. Uh, that solution is basically a, a SaaS offering that we provide. Uh, we, we shift our development process from a waterfall, we move to agile, but when we move to deliver that software as a, as a service, uh, we move to continuous delivery. And we, bid, we made a big change in, inside R&D and the way that we develop software. I would be more than happy to share it with you after that because we don't have a lot of time. But the, the main point that I want to emphasize is that we are getting the feedback from the customers and we, are able, uh, we, and we can deliver new content on a very short cycles, okay? So, so we are looking forward to hear your feedback. A um, few things that might be very interesting for you as a pro project managers or also as a dev managers, uh, you take the time estimation that you mentioned, you see the progress that went during the sprint, but do you really know what's going on down there, what the developers are working on? Um, so basically some of the capabilities that we are showing here give you a full visibility on what's happening in your, in your project, okay? So what you can see over here, that's a release summary that show you um, uh, how many user stories uh, and uh, defects were delivered, how many code coverage of, of uh, your unit tests you have, and, and uh, the success ratio. Um, where is the scroll over here? So, it's really hard to show that right now. I cannot scroll down. Um, however, what you can see over here, that's what we delivered. You can see over here uh, what really we worked on. So you can see the defects. Um, no, no, it's not working, I don't know why. Um, so basically what you can see over here, those are uh, the defects that we delivered in that release. You can see the code changes. So what you can see over here, which is very interesting. You can see the, how many user stories we worked on, how many uh, uh, defects we worked on, and how many tasks that were not assigned uh, the developer worked on, how many code they, they committed that they didn't link to uh, uh, a either a user story or a defect. And this is something that you probably would like to check and understand what the development team worked on. It can help you to make a, a better risk on what you need to test and what activities you need to do in order to, uh, to understand what the development team are working on. In addition, you have an overview of, of uh, the build status, and you can drill down into it and see what really happened uh, during, the, during the release. So you can see over here uh, all the pipeline, all the uh, builds that were uh, run during that, uh, that time frame, and you have a very interesting view uh, of what happened. You can see per each build how many uh, defects, how many user story, and how many code that wasn't linked to a, a real uh, defect or user story. Uh, To explain you the concept, we are uh, connecting all the dots of all the artifacts that actually happened during the agile development, okay? The code, the user story defects, the test activities that are done, 
and we can show you, slice and dice all the information and give you a better visibility on what's really going on and the traceability of what's really going on in your, in your development project, okay? And this is just one, one of the capability. We don't have a lot of time. Basically, we, we, we need to... You can, you can see who are the committers, who, who actually uh, made a change. You can actually see the real change. Uh, and from here, we are connected to the source control, and you can, you can dive into. I, I will not open it now for a question, because we need to end, and I, I don't want to hold everyone uh, from, uh, but I'm, I'm here. I'm not going to lunch. Um, anyway, so that was really fast to show you. We don't have a lot of time. We, we encourage you to come to the booth and to see a full demo. Uh, we'll be more than happy to show it to you. If you have any question, or, or suggestion, uh, both Victoria and me are here until the end of the conference, and we encourage you to come and, and talk with us. Have any questions that, that you have, we're, we're here. And hopefully, I, you know, we triggered your interest in one way or another. And have a great lunch, Yes, we, we are excited from that product. We really love it, so, so we hope that you too. Thank you. <laughs>